Okay, it's day the 19th, the day after Waterloo historically happened. Uh, we have the forces uh, gathered around Waterloo now. <coughs> um, it's the fifth day since uh, Napoleon and his army crossed uh, the river here at Charleroi. And uh, essentially he went straight up here, of course, pushing aside the Prussians who were trying to mobilise them. Uh, their forces here. Um, big combat ran around Quatre Bras, uh, resulted in um, a nightfall, rain, and a reorganization of the Anglo Allied Army. Now, this game is wonderful in that um, uh, units can be completely eliminated off the board one day and then uh, numbers of them can be reorganized and come back the next day. So, um, uh, uh, this was full of eliminated units on the Anglo-Allied side. This was uh, fairly full of eliminated... No, that was full of eliminated Prussian units. These are permanently dead. Um, but you can see the ones in the not permanently dead piles have nearly all been uh, brought back. Um, they do not come back at, at full strength, but still, uh, we've got a lot of units back on the board. Uh, there's only uh, two turns, you probably can't see that all that far away. There's only two turns on this last day. We finish in the afternoon. Um, what to do? Well, it's uh, Napoleon's turn. Um, essentially, he gets uh, two victory points for capturing the Prussian supply hex. Two victory points. No, sorry, it's um, the Allies get two victory points for retaining these. And um, then there's and uh, Napoleon gets two victory points for retaining this one. Um, so he's got that essentially. This uh, Prussian unit's not really a threat. He's got some cavalry around here to contain it. Um, but if he could take this off the Prussians, at the moment he's in, in a position for a marginal victory um, on the balance of losses. If he can take this one from the Prussians, then he will, he will move up to a substantial victory. Um, so uh, I had forgotten about that. I was concentrating on this. And so most of the Prussian forces had, in fact, I'd, I had done it that all the Prussian forces, except for one, one, one uh, this, this was a stack there, had crossed this major river here. There's only there's a crossing here and then other crossings all the way up here. Um, so the Prussians are rather stuck uh, away from their supply source. So when I remember that was theirs, I, I sort of backtracked and allowed this force to come back to protect it. He's in a, um, a uh, what they call a chateau, which is a sort of extra defensive um, position, um, better than just a normal sort of town and village hex. Um, so there's a there's a, a regiment there of infantry and some cavalry there. So essentially, what Napoleon's going to do is um, these guys have moved. <laughs> they're going to have to go back. There's not going to be time. It's going to be cavalry, um, cavalry battle for control of that hex, and then he'll just be holding his line here, and uh, Wellington will basically have to consider. Do I rest? Um, uh, do, do, do I cut my losses here, or do I risk a counter-offensive and um, try to equalise or improve the loss balance? Whole cause that had been demoralised, like this one is. Um, I've come back to life, so it's it's really a remarkable recovery by the uh, Anglo-Allied Prussian side. I have some notes from before where um, we were standing at uh, there was five corps on the Allied Prussian side versus three corps on the um, um, sorry the French had at at one point. So I think it was at the beginning of the, S the day before. The French had five full corps, and the Anglo-Allied Prussians only had three full corps. The French had, on top of that, the French had two cavalry corps. Um, 
on the left versus three on the uh, um, allied right, and then they had one cavalry corps versus one cavalry corps on their right versus the allied left. So five, six, seven, eight versus seven. So he had eight corps versus seven corps, but um, uh, four of those corps on the allied side were cavalry. So, um, you know, which aren't as powerful as the others generally, so they're good for, you know, manoeuvres and cut-offs and things like that, but won't hold the ground so long. So Napoleon had a big advantage, and he's going to, I think, kick himself at the end of this campaign that he did not exploit that advantage. Um, it would have been a gamble, but then that, if it had paid off, that would have been the decisive victory that he's doubt he's going to be able to manage now at this point. So anyway, back to the Napoleonic side. Um, uh, Ney has put this cavalry corps in command. These two, you see he positioned himself turn before so that he could choose any of those three. He's left those two cavalry corps out of command. Um, Napoleon can put three folks in command. Um, it's not so important because he, I don't, he's not going to attack now. He, I think he'll be withdrawing folks, if anything. And uh, I'll get back to that. Yeah, so uh, Napoleon's brought these um, uh, one, two, three corps in command and left these two out. But essentially, he's going to bring his line back um, on the streamline there. And uh, Grouchy has Grouchy there has brought those two corps in command, which will be going after Prussian supply. Uh, so the um, there's neither force, neither side has a, a forced march chat in store. So oh, that's an out of command thing. That's okay. Um, I'm just drawing the French. Initiative is three four. Okay, so that's average three three infantry four for cavalry. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. Napoleon sit idle while there's a victory to be had. Who ever heard of it? So um, he's thrust his forces over this way, um, try, hope, hoping just at least to take out. Um, weak forces on the British, uh, the Anglo-Allied right flank there, uh, possibly even get to his supply line. He, he doubts that, but maybe he can destroy some more of their units, enough to tip the balance decisively in his favour. So the rest of his units moved up here, some blocking position there. The old guard have gone into fight through the woods here. You can see these thick woods here make it difficult because he's got cavalry, but it takes it takes cavalry extra long to get through woods longer than foot sloggers. So that, well, there won't be time to do that. So they're just um, going to have to fight to take through the woods and cavalry here against. Uh, they're just hoping to knock them away because they won't be able to advance to their position. Anyway, so uh, these are blocking that to save his supply line. And these uh, uh, Dielon uh, detached some cavalry to support um, Grouchy with Exelmans um, who are going after that. So we have uh, some combat. This stack and this stack are under attack. It is also kind of tempting them to come forward and fight. He wants the fight. It's a gamble and he's throwing us. Now I'm unclear on the rules at this point. We've got um, anglo allied units here in this Chateau Hex and uh, what happens is that one infantry unit can be counted in the Chateau and the other units are counted like outside the Chateau, chateau kind of uh, defending it and it, the rules say that you have to take out these guys before you can attack this guy quote, even in the same phase. Now what I don't know, uh, if that means that all of these guys can attack these guys, once they're out of the way, all of these guys can attack these guys, 
or if it means that because you can split attacks um no hang on a minute a whole hex attacks will not split its attacks unless it's artillery bombardment so i guess that means i don't know it doesn't explicit doesn't mean i'd have to have another force to take out those once these have dealt with those Ah oh dear, I think what I'm gonna I'll have to take it that way because otherwise it, I think it would be too easy to dislodge those. So I think what we're going to do is we'll do artillery bombardment, hopefully to dislodge those, and then the infantry will go in and um, so cavalry will go in against them. So uh, I'll tell you that's one plus five, that's six against four. So six against four is um, one and a half to one. We want a low roll. We've got three. One and a half to one is defender retreat. Perfect. So the artillery bombardment retreats these fellows. Uh, let's say. Uh, let me see. We've got infantry and artillery. I'll just have to find the hex. Okay, too many infantry in that hex. Okay, they'll have to displace those guys out of Hulmont. So we'll displace them. Uh, and so we are left with uh, 6, 12, 12 versus 5. Now, it can never be greater than two to one attack when we're attacking Chateau. It doesn't say that um, they get 50%, so I'll just take it as two to because uh, normally in a village you get have 50% of the defender, so I'll count it as a two to one. Oh dear, six. That would be the worst result possible. Attack a retreat. That's a shame because these uh, fellows attacking here. My phone keeps putting itself on the blink because it uh, says it's getting too hot, poor thing. I'm pretty hot myself. It's uh, summer evenings. Um, so, we've got the old guard. Um, Napoleon into the attack. Clinton's unsullied uh, regiment here. Um, no, that's not a regiment. That's a... The whole brigade, isn't it? That's Picton's brigade, which has come back from uh, being destroyed, um, and some horses and artillery. It works out at 17 to 20, which is a one to one, but uh, because Napoleon's there, that goes up to two to one because they have a com combined arms attack, that's three to one, and I forgot. The allies are on a village, so they get... Oh, and the cavalry are going through woods, so they are at 50%, so um, that's 19 to... Uh, these go up 50%, 17, 50% 17 makes that, what, um, 25 and a half against 19. So it's not so great, so it's uh, one to one and a half, up, 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 up to one and a half to one, and we get a four exchange, oh no, that's the worst, well, I mean, apart from attack eliminated, that's the worst result Berlin could have got, um, he should have scouted out that stack first. <laughs> Oh well, I, I mean, it, I could have left it at a, a minor victory for Napoleon, but um, here goes. So that means that the old guard have been um, involved in an adverse result, which is I think it's going to demoralise all of Napoleon's army. Let me check that out. That's all the, uh, the his attacks for this morning of the 19th. And uh, next uh, we'll go to the Allied turn. Actually, just noticed an interesting result. It's in the exchange, all combat units on the weaker side are eliminated. In this case, in this case,